Hi, it's Lindsay. Welcome to BB on Blast. Now, I missed my usual Tuesday slot, um, so I've actually seen the evictions. So basically, the whole week that I'm about to talk about is completely redundant. But <laughs> what's new? Um, I was a bit confused this week again. I admit, I've not watched any live feed and um, what else have I not watched? Um, oh, I've not looked on Twitter. And yeah, I just, I don't really know what's going on, but um, that never stopped me podcasting before. Um, <laughs> so we're going from Neely's eviction. Oh, Neely, remember her? Um, yeah, <laughs> Neely says something about Scott's coup de gras. What is that? That's not a thing. Uh, <laughs> um, her whole speech was bashing Scott. I don't remember that. Um, oh, Whitney did a speech that rhymed. When something rhymes, it must be the truth. Don't remember what that's about. Morgan's tasseled dress, eek. Uh, I can remember Morgan's most recent eviction dress, and that's on the eek list as well. Off the shoulder, floral. Was it a dress or was it a jumpsuit? Disgusting. Um, <laughs> she dresses about 30 years above her age. She does. Why does she dress like... She dresses like Alex's mum. I'd like to see what their mum looks like, actually, and see uh, who they're taking after. But, yeah, Morgan dresses like, I don't know, like a politician's wife or something. Um, what else? Oh, Danielle looked hot. Danielle looks very good on eviction. She always wears, like, bodycon dresses, apart from the sweaty armpits, just to gloss over that. Her hair always looks nice. I like her hair curly. She's got a really good body. I noticed the other day when she was wearing, like, cut-off, like, hot pants uh, when she won the Vita. I was like, four. And, you know, I'm straight, so... Um, Justin's Paisley shirt, half eek, half chic. Can't remember that. Oh, <laughs> Scott clapped when Neely was evicted, which we thought was bad at the time, but then he clapped when he got evicted, so <laughs> maybe he just clapped at every eviction. He probably clapped when he got evicted because he was embarrassed about when he clapped when Neely got evicted. Um, either way, Scott, you're lame. So Chrissy's HOH reign, in summary... Mm, didn't go so well, did it? <laughs> Her best friend got evicted. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> I've put here, Justin proudly says he pees in the hot tub. He was like, I can't bother to get out and go all the way to the toilet. <laughs> um, when Paulie did that, it was disgusting. Because it's Justin, we don't care. I'm um, just looking at my notes. I can't remember any of this next bit. Uh, I've put, Shelby says something about hypocrite. Tiets, don't understand that. Ball smashers, they're bugging. Yeah, they are bugging. Justin said to Chrissy, I'm going to protect you from Scott. But he still has hella compassion for Scott. Why? Uh, Jason said to Scott, why was part of your campaign to bully Danielle? Oh, the bully card. And Scott said, because I thought America would like it. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, and he said, I just don't give a fuck anymore. That's good. Oh, God, and then Daniel's going, I hope America sees what type of person you are. Shut up about America, bitch. Um, and as usual, just when someone has a big fight with someone, they become the new HOH, and Danielle was crowned the new HOH. Can I remember how or why? No. <laughs> well, this, oh. Without the incessant, like, recaps and um, people explaining to me what's going on, I... I have no recollection of any of these events and I'm trying to do a podcast about it. Quite difficult, isn't it? I think I need my own uh, live feed correspondent. <laughs> um, Danielle said she wanted Alex out and not Scott, which was quite surprising after Scott had been bullying her. And Chrissy was kissing up to Danielle. Don't remember that. <laughs> oh, Neely's interview. Um <laughs> <laughs> she said she was evicted because America likes the split in the house. Don't know how that works. She said, yes, ma'am, to Julie. I like that. You've got to show the chamber some respect. <laughs> she said, Scott is trying to be a baby evil dick, but he's not even fit to lick evil dick's ankle sweat. Um, now, I've heard... Uh, <laughs> on the rumour mill that Evil Dick's HIV positive, so be careful when licking his ankle sweat. Although it probably can't be transmitted that way. Although, actually, probably can. Um, don't quote me on that. 
Um, <laughs> I've said Julie looks feminine in a pretty summer dress. That makes a change. Normally she looks right old state. Um, Neely said Whitney is pretending to be sweet for strategy. I think she might be right because Whitney's been flip flopping all over the shop this week. Um, oh, Julie told Neely about the sisters' twist, and Neely said, "Shut up, that's hurt my heart." Why does it hurt your heart? Who cares? Um, she couldn't even guess. Julie was like, "Oh, guess who the sisters are in the house?" And Neely's like, "Uh, so for fuck's sake, come on, it's not that difficult." Um, or guess who the siblings are. It's still not that difficult. Uh, Justin and Jason. Uh, uh. She didn't say that, but... And Neely said, I can hold a grudge. What about the sisters thing? Who cares? Um, uh, <laughs> Someone on Twitter sent me something. <laughs> Marcel sent me a thing that... Because well, I appealed for some of Justin's tall stories. I know this is an old one, but I hadn't heard it. But how he ended up in a white uh, supremacist bar... And they were all shouting Satan and saying how they hated black people and he had to pretend to be white. And uh, he was shouting Satan too, but he felt guilty about it. And he said he was definitely probably on mushrooms. <laughs> what a fantastic story. Um, <laughs> thank God Justin has stayed in this long. Imagine this show without Justin. Oh, my God. This show without Justin and Jason would be oof, unforgivable. Um, so Daniel was gunning for the bull... Bull smashers or bull busters or what the fuck are they called? Bull... Oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> um, I've put the HRH seems redundant as America's vote seems to go home every time. That's true. It's even more redundant when you put a ridiculous care package atop it. Um, Alex was not happy that Scott wanted to prioritise her game over his. Oh, Scott has been a right creepy motherfucker. It's like, oh... We're the power couple, and you can tell Alex like she wanted to like throw up a bit. It's like mm, we're not a couple, mate. Uh, in your dreams, I hate Alex. She is so annoying. Why do people like her? Like Morgan is so much more likable than her. Ugh. In the DR, she is particularly obnoxious, but just in general, like I hate the way she talks. I hate the way she looks. I just, oh god, awful, 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 awful. Oh, I'm a super fan. Shut up. Um. Alex was saying she's going to cut Morgan at the end. No, you're not. So shall we got the next care package? Uh, why? Are they saving the good care packages for um, Jason and Justin? I fucking hope so. Because why is Shelby getting one? I hate Shelby as well. Screwed up little bulldog chewing a wasp face. Ugh, disgusting. Um, so she got to eliminate three eviction votes. Basically, she got to eliminate the whole of the late night jamborees votes which is really fucking annoying especially as danielle had won hoh as it turned out in the end it didn't matter but at this point it's like oh that's re- what's the point in even having hoh and winning hoh if you can't evict the person you want like it makes no sense like the only thing hoh guarantees you at this point is you're safe and that's it and probably they'll get a care package to get rid of that next week stupid then danielle was basically crying in the dr going I put, nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. But that's a Coldplay lyric. I think she said something along those lines. And just be grateful that I didn't sing. Um, something about Shelby on her space hopper. I remember she was bouncing up and down on her space hopper. I hope she doesn't break her neck much. Um, the Jamboree were all sat outside saying America hates us. Danielle was having a pity party. Oh, Danielle actually had to give it a strategy here. She said she wanted to put Morgan up because Morgan hadn't had a care package yet. So it'd be a good idea to get rid of anyone who hasn't got a care package yet. That's actually a good bit of strategy. I've heard a couple of decent bits of strategy from Danielle here and there. Very few and far between, I must admit. But even when she won that veto, which we've not talked about yet, she had a good strategy for that as well. So she has got a brain in her head. I actually kind of like Danielle in a way. Um, there's the aspects of her I like. I know she's got, you know, child abuse, not child abuse, animal abuse and child something against her. But um, I don't know. There's something about her I like. She, I like the fact she's not like sat there pining since, what's that? <laughs> since Shane left. She's just getting on with it. And I think she's a lot better without him in the house. Boring, stinking up her game with his man bun. Um, so Jason was striking deals with the other side of the house. 
this was the week basically all the divides kind of broke down or at least blurred quite heavily um and it it's when people started kind of putting Morgan's name out there and I really wanted someone to say to Alex oh let's put Morgan of and then f- to see what Alex did but no one seems to ever say anything bad about Morgan to Alex I really want them to because that would be interesting the whole what is the point of having the sisters in there if there's no drama related to it like they've covered it up so well and you've got to hand it to them because I have hidden it really well but they've covered it up so well, it's actually boring to watch. So I hope that something does kick off with that later down the line. Although I I doubt it very much, to be honest. So then the have-nots were announced, and it was Whitney, Chrissy, and Justin. <laughs> that was funny, I must admit. I, I did actually see look on Twitter earlier in the week, and I saw Justin going outside and going... Why? That was hilarious. How has he been coping with being a have not? Because I've not watched any live feed, so I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, no more pizza songs for you, Justin. <laughs> you have to do a song about slop instead. What was that song I was singing on the live feed? Something about nut sacks. Disgusting. So then there's the safety ceremony. <laughs> Yawn. Um. Oh yeah, and uh, so there was a lot of campaigning going on to Danielle. But I've put it's not interesting because three votes were cancelled out. So any campaigning, it's, I don't know, it's like it's like when they do the reset week. It's like it just becomes boring. There's no, there's nothing at stake. Um, so Daniel ended up putting Whitney and Shelby on the block. Um, I'm not sure why. There wasn't much explanation about that. Now, this was interesting. Justin said he'd use the veto on Whitney. And later on, I think he said he fancied her. I was like, what? I think it's just like, what is it? Um, situational homosexuality. Like, <laughs> like Whitney's the only girl in the house. So, not she's not the only girl. She's one of the only available girls in the house. I think he's just getting desperate now. No offence, Whitney, but come on. Um, oh, and thank God, America's vote. America, I was losing faith in you, but you pulled it back. I really thought they were going to put one of the jamboree up, but thank God they put Scott up for his bullying of Dan. No, I don't know why, but I'm fucking glad they did. I fucking hate Scott. Him and his voice can pack their bags, pack your belongings and leave. Um, so that was good because then you knew that one of the ball smashers was actually going with the lights or not. I was like, thank, thank you, Jesus, as Needy once said. So the veto picks created a bit of drama because Whitney picked Justin, not one of the ball, sm- the ball smashers. Um, and then, oh, this is when Justin said Whitney told Whitney he answered her. He said, I can't stop looking at you. And she went, I can tell from when you put the bread in the fridge when you were talking to me. He was like, what? I did the what? She's like, you put the bread in the fridge like you weren't concentrating. He's like, oh. I wanted him to get in bed and cuddle them, but he didn't in the have not room on that trampoline. Mind you, that trampoline's seen enough action. I'm not sure it could take another romp. Um, so the veto. Oh, yeah. I thought it was good that Danielle didn't put Scott up because if she had, who knows who America's vote would have been. So that was like a bit of an unintentional good strategy from her there. And it also turned out that it was good she put Whitney up because then she could take Whitney down and whoever else went up so Danielle's strategy was good I think some of it was accidental this week but some of it was actually useful um so then the January decided they were going to take Scott out after all even though Danielle said she wasn't gonna uh go after him but you know well it's what America wants so you know um so then there was the Halloween veto oh god the preamble video on that like oh you must go and find Clementine's Dolly or whatever. Oh, shut up. That went on way too long. Boring. Uh, although, I did like the um, the people in the house, like the scary people. That I thought that was quite good. It reminded me of BB UK Task, actually. That one where, um, was it Nikki Gra- Graham broke out the mirror? Uh, <laughs> like the girl out the ring. That was really good in like the mental hospital. Um, so it kind of reminded me of that. So that was good. But um, also, strangers in the house, outside contact... I mean, it was funny seeing the way different people reacted, like Justin was screaming, Jason was like being super polite to them, going, oh, very nice to meet you, I like your beard, <laughs> I don't know, it was funny, um, and then, uh, oh, Danielle, just, her strategy was just to ignore them all and get the stuff, which is a bloody good strategy, she wasn't afraid, she wasn't screaming like Justin was, um, so Danielle got all the power in the house, which I was quite happy about, I, I like Danielle again though, I don't know why. 
So then the Jamboree did a deal, a side deal with Whitney, basically.